Live from WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. High alert, police warn of possible new threats against the U.S. Capitol today, who they believe may be targeting lawmakers and why. Hope on the horizon when top health experts in the Commonwealth say Virginians will be able to have their vaccine. Heartbreak on the VCU campus. I'm here to pay your respect and hopefully this never happens again in our school or any school. How students are helping Adam Oaks' family cope with his death. Good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us this morning on this Thursday. I'm Rachel Lucas. And I'm Patrick McKee. Almost to the weekend. Things Ooh. really looking up for us weather-wise outside. It's been quite nice here for several yeah, days. It has been walking When's out this morning. When's the last time we were able to say that? <sighs> Never. I don't know. It feels like it's been <laughs> It does feel like years. it's been forever. <laughs> Let's get over to Chris to see if this nice trend is going to continue. You're the man of the hour today. Yeah, you know, I'd rather be on this end of the forecast mm -hmm. than uh, yeah, no where kidding, we were right? February. My gosh, but February has had a little bit of a lasting impact on us just because it's taking a while for some of the spring leaves to bloom. That's especially the case to the south. As you notice, parts of North Carolina in the blue, things are pretty late to bloom. We'll get there especially if we get days like today where we're in the 50s and 60s for highs. We start out this morning, most of us by 8 a.m. in the 40s with temperatures climbing from there. We'll be in the low to mid 50s across much of the area by lunchtime. Salem 59 this afternoon, Rocky Mountain, Smith Mountain Lake 58, Daleville at 54. And once again, guys, plenty of sunshine out there for our Friday Eve. The U.S. Capitol is under heightened security this morning due to the possible threat of violence. New intelligence points to possible violence today from domestic extremists. Officials say QAnon conspiracy theorists believe today is the true inauguration day and that Donald Trump will retake the presidency. A joint FBI Homeland Security Intelligence Bulletin says domestic extremist groups had discussed plans to take control of the U.S. Capitol and remove Democratic lawmakers. Capitol Police are taking the threats seriously. The acting chief says there's been 93% hike in these threats so far this year. Possibility of a similar incident occurring in the current environment is a very clear and present danger. With President Biden's address to a joint session of Congress yet to be scheduled, the acting Capitol Police chief is calling for heightened security measures to remain in place until then. It's been nearly a year since the first coronavirus case in the Commonwealth, but we're reaching a light at the end of the tunnel. More shots are going into arms. The Virginia Health Department will get 69,000 Johnson & Johnson doses over the next few weeks, with an additional 22,000 of those going to pharmacies. By the end of the month, state health officials say vaccine supply will increase significantly. The Health Department says J&J &J weekly shipments will increase to 100,000 doses. Pfizer and Moderna shipments are expected to increase by 10,000. We're going to be close to 300,000 doses a week. Uh, as you know, our, we set goals. We wanted to get to 25,000 shots a day and then to 50,000, and we're right there uh, in that ballpark. According to Virginia's top vaccine expert, the Commonwealth will receive half a million total COVID doses by the end of the month, putting us on track for everyone to get their first shot by May. In the New River Valley, health leaders received 5,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson shot. The area health director says the doses will be split between those 65 and older and others in Phase 1A and 1B, but you can choose to wait for the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. All of the approved vaccines are excellent choices. Um, they are all very safe and they all do an excellent job of preventing serious illness, hospitalization and death. And those are our biggest, biggest public health goals right now to get through this pandemic. A large scale vaccination event is planned for Monday by appointment only. The Public Health Task Force is also planning a state of the pandemic town hall next Thursday. A local Kruger is apologizing after it says it turned away an eligible pregnant woman for her vaccine appointment by mistake. Tiffany Del Rio planned to travel from Northern Virginia to the Salem Kruger. She's pregnant, but decided the vaccine was the right choice for her. Del Rio says the pharmacy canceled her appointment, saying they would not give the Pfizer vaccine to a pregnant woman. While still in, the re in research, the CDC says vaccines should not be withheld if the person wants it and is eligible. 
So I was really disappointed that after spending hours on my computer navigating the system to find a vaccine that I find out, you know, days before that I'm not going to get it. In a statement to 10 News, Kroger says in part, it was an honest mistake due to the misinterpretation of the guidelines. The customer who visited our store to get a vaccine should not have been turned away. Kroger's offering Del Rio a new appointment. Today could be the day the Senate takes up the COVID-19 relief bill. Senate Democrats are down to the wire, scrambling to put the final touches on the COVID-19 relief bill. Direct payments will now be sent to fewer Americans. Individuals making more than $80,000 and couples above $160,000 will not receive a check this time around. The minimum wage bump has also been taken out. Not a single Republican is expected to vote for the bill they are gearing up for a messy fight. Last catalog of liberal spending with basically no relationship whatsoever to beating COVID-19. This whole bill, in my opinion, gets an F grade because it fails to do what it's supposed to do. Passage of the bill will likely go into the weekend. Lynchburg school leaders are announcing major steps in their return to learn plan. Students in grades pre-K through second grade will return in person four days a week starting on April 13th. Mondays will be a remote learning day. School leaders say families will still have the option for full remote learning. All other grades will stay on their current schedule. There are talks about bringing more students back at a later date for grades three through five. Starting on Monday, Halifax County Schools will bring fourth through sixth graders and ninth graders back to the classroom for hybrid learning. For the rest of the year, students will either have the combination of face-to-face -face and distance instruction, or they'll be entirely remote. The state superintendent has announced a million dollar grant to study the impact of the pandemic on the Commonwealth's public schools. Researchers will look at pre and post pandemic trends through the 2022 2023 school year in student attendance, grade level retention, enrollment in advanced courses and more. They will also look at the effectiveness of school reopening and recovery plans and its impacts on students and teachers. The research will be conducted by the Department of Education and the University of Virginia. An emotional night on the VCU campus. Family and friends of Adam Oaks and students in the university came together to remember the freshman. Oaks died at an off-campus party that may have involved hazing this past weekend. Students gathered with Oaks family to light candles and reflect on his life. His family says the 19 year old passed out at the Delta Chi fraternity house where he was found dead the next morning. No one expected he would lose his life. Appreciate all the love and support and mm -hmm. and all the posts we read them. It's mm -hmm. helping my wife and I get through these tough times. It means a lot, you know, and just all the love, you know, that's what Adam was about, kindness and friendship. The fraternity is now suspended from campus as VCU begins a review of how similar organizations are initiating students. 608 this morning and what's news today. The New River Health District holds a second shot vaccine clinic today and tomorrow. So if you received your first dose between January 25th and 29th from the New River Health District or pharmacy partner in the New River Valley, you can get your second shot from 9 to 230 at the Blue Ridge Church Vaccination Center. Lexington City Council is holding a public hearing about selling city on property tonight on Spotswood Street. The developer is proposing to buy the property to build affordable housing. Tonight's meeting takes place online starting at 7. The Roanoke Equity and Empowerment Advisory Board is holding a public hearing today at 4. It will hear suggestions for new names on Lee Plaza and priorities for the board. The meeting will be held virtually. If you wish to speak at the public hearing, you should email City Hall by noon today. We've got a link for the information on how to do that on WSLS.com. The Botetourt County School Board is meeting today. It will hold a budget work session this morning at 8.30. State lawmakers approve a new bill making it safer for drivers and cyclists to share the road. The bill requires drivers to switch lanes when passing a cyclist on the road if three feet can't be maintained. Additionally, two cyclists can now ride abreast when traveling in the biking lanes. Jeremy Holmes from Ride Solutions calls it a major win, saying people on bikes are the most vulnerable vehicle on the road. 
It's important to get more protections into place to help them be safer, but also to do things that educate drivers. The bill now needs Governor Ralph Northam's signature to become a law. A SpaceX rocket exploded when landing for the first time after a high altitude flight test yesterday. The cause of the explosion was not immediately clear. There were no passengers on board the rocket, according to SpaceX. The company says it plans to use Starship for numerous purposes, including taking customers between cities at extreme speeds and eventually taking cargo and humans to Mars. 610 this morning. Coming up, a local town is adding a splash of color to its streets. The artwork it's celebrating and how you can win prizes going to see them. The new at 644, easing anxiety about giving birth during COVID. How to make a birth plan that's best for your family. Plus, an unexpected housing boom in the midst of a pandemic. How you can take advantage of the market and get more for your dollar. Planning out your Thursday hour by hour, we start out with temperatures low to mid 40s at 8 o'clock in the morning. Most of us making our way into the 50s by the afternoon. Cooler in the New River Valley, warmer as you head into Southside. But all of us feeling the breeze will show you how strong wind gusts will get. Plus, tomorrow morning, a few planets to spot in the early morning sky. We'll show you when and where to look next on Virginia Today. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone, making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. New this morning, high school students from right here in Southwest Virginia and Ireland presented their ideas on world issues to officials in both countries. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with how the presentation went. Good morning, Megan. Good morning. So the name of this program is Bridge the Pond. We first introduced you to these students back in January. Since then, these students from Blacksburg High School and the King's Hospital School in Dublin have met four times. They've dived into topics like climate change, recycling, digital citizenship, and study abroad. Then found solutions. Yesterday, they presented those recommendations to members of the U.S. Embassy, European Parliament, Irish Embassy, and a member of the General Assembly. Their teachers are beyond proud. So it's such an excellent thing to be able to, for students uh, to realize that if they can do this when they're 15, 16, then think of what they can do when they're at college and then beyond, right? It's just very inspiring. We spoke to students right before the presentation and they were a little nervous, but excited to share their findings. Coming up in the next half hour, hear about their experience. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. 615 now this month marks one year of the pandemic and more Americans seem to be drinking away the pain, which could lead to problems. An estimated 95,000 people die every year from alcohol related causes. That makes alcohol the third leading preventable cause of death in the U.S. Even a small time out for 30 days can impact your health. Your liver can focus on breaking down toxins in your body. You may lower your blood pressure, sleep more soundly, have more energy, clearer skin and a smaller waistline. Plus, your immune system is also going to get stronger. Now, if you don't feel like you're ready to take a big break, try cutting back. As billions of Americans started working from home, many realized their home wasn't working for them. Tight quarters and closed amenities are pushing city dwellers to the suburbs. Others are simply taking advantage of the market and buying a larger home. Add in historically low interest rates and you have the perfect storm for a pandemic housing boom. That's why you're seeing a sudden move to more of a suburban environment where, quite frankly, you get more space for less dollars. You have to move fast if you're considering a new home. Inventory across the country, as well as right here in southwest Virginia, is tight. New listings often trigger a bidding war hours after hitting the market. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. 
617, we start you out with a live look at our new College Institute Skycam in Martinsville, where currently we're one of the colder spots on the map, only 33 degrees. The rest of us looking a little warmer than we were at this point yesterday, especially the case in areas like Roanoke and Lynchburg and Blacksburg, where we're about 45 to 50 degrees so far. As we head into the afternoon, Lynchburg 59, Lexington 54, Blacksburg and Pulaski at 52, Rocky Mount in the upper 50s, but areas like Martinsville starting out as the cold spot ending up as the warm spot with temperatures in the lower 60s. Now all of us are going to feel the breeze from time to time in the green. That's your wind speed about 10 to 15 miles per hour, especially heading into the afternoon in the yellow. That's your wind gusts area wide between about 20 and 30 miles per hour. So enough to cause damage. Not really enough to be noticeable. Definitely that's going to be the case throughout the day today. The wind turning a little calmer tonight. The air bone dry with clear clear skies overhead. So those three things combined, that's going to allow temperatures to drop off really quickly. You're looking at areas like Covington at 28 first thing tomorrow morning, Alta Vista at 29, Withville and Hillsville at 24 first thing tomorrow morning. So bundle up if you're heading out early on our Friday and also look up early Friday morning. If you're going to be up before the sun, Mercury and Jupiter are hanging out close together in the eastern sky. Saturn is going to remain a little socially distant from the two of them, but still should be a cool view in our eastern sky with cool air coming into the eastern US over the course of the weekend. Notice low pressure north of Maine. That's going to drag down some cooler air in the blue as we head into the weekend. Temperatures a few degrees below the average, but as that low pressure loses its grip on our weather into early next week, you see the red shadings on the map indicating will be much warmer. Temperatures about 10 degrees above the average this time of year. So here's how it all shapes out in the extended forecast. We're in the 50s today, right where we should be. Then we're in the upper 40s and lower 50s for daytime highs throughout the first weekend of March in the Roanoke Valley. 20s for morning lows. Now as we head into next week, Monday in the upper 50s, the 60s return by Tuesday and by Wednesday. That's the temperatures that are about 10 degrees above the average for the early to middle part of March. For the Lynchburg area, upper 50s today, lower 50s each afternoon through the weekend after starting out in the 20s, but we rebound really nicely next Tuesday and Wednesday. Highs in the 60s, and I should also mention not a single shot of rain in that extended forecast for now. Time now coming up on 620. Let's get you caught up on some drive times. I got my trash can in the street. I didn't sink into the ground. There you I go. I still walked over mud, but I didn't sink. It's progress. It is progress. <laughs> time saver traffic this morning at 620. Uh, we are looking good on time drives as we remain accident free and congestion free as well. Uh, 81 Christiansburg to Roanoke. That's a 33 minute drive. Lexington to Roanoke on 81 takes you 43. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Google will stop selling ads based on browsing across websites. Starting next year, Alphabet, Google's parent company, also plans to stop investing in tracking technology that uniquely identifies web users as they move from site to site on the internet. And retailer Michael's looking to go private. The arts and crafts giant reaching a $5 billion deal with Apollo Global Management to go private. Apollo will acquire Michael's stock for $22 a share as part of the deal. And theater chain Alamo Draft House Cinema filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This move by the Texas-based chain is in part of an asset purchase agreement with investors, Altamont Capital Partners, and Fortress Investment Group. Alamo saying it will continue to operate its business as normal during the bankruptcy proceedings. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schuller from Cheddar Studios in New York. Work at a new resort at Universal Orlando is back on. Officials say Epic Universe, the resort's fourth park, will create an entirely new level of theme park entertainment. The resort was announced in 2019, but work halted in July due to the pandemic. The restart will begin immediately, but is expected to take several months before as Universal restaffs. Epic Universe will feature a new theme park, entertainment center, hotels, shops, restaurants, and a whole lot more. Something else exciting mm -hmm. for Central Florida. Uh, 621 now, still to come this morning, it's almost time for spring cleaning. How you can turn what you don't want into cash towards something new. Plus, celebrating the work of local students despite the pandemic, the Unique Way businesses in downtown Pulaski are showing their support. Next. 625 now, historic downtown Pulaski is getting a splash of color with new art pieces. 
created by kids. About 70 pieces made by students in the New River Valley are on display in the storefront windows you see there on Main Street. Normally, they'd be featured in a gallery at schools, but with the pandemic putting a wrench in those plans like so many other things, the Art Center found a different way to celebrate. Despite all the struggles they had this year, they kept creating art. Art is such an important way for us to work through issues, to express ourselves. It really is. If you want to learn more about the displays, you can scan the QR codes while also participating in a scavenger hunt to win free art supplies. What an incredible idea and what incredible mm -hmm. works of art that they created. Mm -hmm. I know that's way Talented. better than just putting it on the refrigerator, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people get to see it this way yeah. and yeah. incredible pieces they've they've created. Yeah. Well done. How fun for them to take their family and friends and go see it. Yeah, yeah, know? absolutely. Absolutely. Like you said, a lot better than the refrigerator door for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right, coming up on 626 here this morning and feeling pretty good out there for most of the area. Although I think as we head toward 8 a.m., most of us will see our temperatures kind of become more uniform. We'll be in the low to mid 40s by then. Lots of us in the 50s, plenty of sunshine. So taking a walk around the area may not be a bad idea this afternoon, although it will be a little breezy at times. South side, the warm spot on the map by the afternoon. Starting out is the cold spot, Martinsville 61 this afternoon, Danville South Boston at 62. Temperatures will take a little bit of a hit as we head into the first weekend of March. Notice morning lows. We start out in the 20s. We make our way back into the low to mid 50s each afternoon, but we don't have to give up much sunshine from there. So that's some good news. Eventually we get the sunshine and the warmth by next week with highs in the 60s on Tuesday and Wednesday. 627 this morning, a major win in the fight against police brutality. The new bill just passed by the House and who it's honoring. Plus, the act of kindness a struggling Virginia restaurant received that inspired them to give back. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Sweeping changes could be coming to U.S. elections. The bill House lawmakers passed overnight and what it could mean for our next election. Southside's newest attraction, one step closer to rolling the dice, taking shape. The new progress made for Danville's Casino. It's time to spring clean, but instead of trashing your unwanted items, sell them. The easy ways you can make a little bit of money. Good morning and a happy Thursday. Friday Eve, as we like to call it around here. We thank you for waking up with us. I'm Patrick McKee. And I'm Rachel Lucas. This work week just scooching on by. It is. Which is nice. And as we're waking up, it feels nice out today. I don't even know what to do with that. Not you, Southside, though. Mm -mm. A little chilly there. Yeah, temperatures all over the place, guys, this morning. As Patrick was just saying, Southside, the cold spot for now. You'll actually be the warm spot this afternoon. South Boston at 30 degrees. Then you go towards Smith Mountain Lake, Roanoke, and Covington. You're at 50 Blacksburg at 43, so temperatures again just kind of sporadic so far this morning. As we head into the afternoon, the Highlands, whereas you're starting out a little chilly, you'll make your way into the upper 40s and lower 50s in the areas like Newcastle. Areas like Covington and Lexington, I expect you to get into the middle 50s with plenty of sunshine as we go throughout the day today and plenty of a breeze as well. That breeze lingers into the weekend and eventually pulls down some colder air. We'll only be in the upper 40s for highs Friday through Sunday after starting out in the 20s each morning, but as Quick as we cool down, we warm right back up. Look at next week. High temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday in the Highlands, making their way into the 60s. New this morning, House Democrats pass a sweeping voting rights bill despite GOP opposition. This bill would restrict partisan gerrymandering of congressional districts, help stop voter suppression, and bring transparency to campaign finance systems. The bill now advances to the Senate in what would be the largest overhaul of U.S. election laws in at least a generation. House lawmakers also passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act last night. The police reform bill bans chokeholds and eliminates qualified immunity for law enforcement. The 220 to 212 vote came nine months after George Floyd was killed by Minneapolis police officers last spring. The legislation also bans no-knock warrants, mandates data collection on police encounters, prohibits racial and religious profiling, and redirects funding to community-based policing programs. The trial of the former police officer charged with killing Floyd is scheduled to begin Monday. 
An investigation is underway after the death of a local inmate. According to the Department of Corrections, Jeffrey Easley died at Twin County Regional Hospital in Galax. He was serving a life sentence for the 2010 killing of Tina Smith in Roanoke County and the kidnapping of her then 12 year old daughter. U.S. and Virginia flags have been ordered to be lowered to half staff across the Commonwealth to honor the memory of Dominic Wenham of the Stanley Police Department. Wenham was shot and killed last week during a traffic stop. A funeral for the officer will be held today in Luray. The $400 million plan to develop a casino in Danville is taking shape. Caesars Entertainment says Marnell Companies will help redevelop the Dan River Mills School Field site into a Caesars casino. The firm has designed several Vegas casinos and attractions, most notably the Bellagio. The progress is encouraging for nearby business owners who want to uh, cash in when the casino is done. Real excited. We're doing a lot of things, including an expansion in this building that we're looking at for the business here um, because we are preparing when that casino is open that we will be um, growing even bigger than what we are now. Caesars Danville is slated to open in 2023. The project could break ground later this year. It is time to spring clean, but instead of trashing your unwanted items, Try selling them. A new eBay survey says the average American household has about 50 unused items around the house worth more than $3. Here are expert tips to making the most cash selling online. It's time to toss the old and start new for spring. But before you throw it out, try selling it. There's a right way and a wrong way to do it online. A seller's biggest mistake how you show it off. There's been several items that I've turned down because of the description, very vague description. Also know which platform is the best for you to use. A heavy and hard to pack basketball hoop is ideal on Facebook Marketplace where a local can pick it up. While your name brand shoes may sell for a higher price on Poshmark rather than bidding sites like eBay and Craigslist. Is image everything? Yes, 75% of online shoppers rely on product photos when deciding on a potential purchase. I bought a pair of shoes that in the picture looks black and then they turn out to be navy blue. Include several high quality images of the item from different angles and take them with natural light behind you, filter free in an area free of clutter. And the more vivid a description, the better. Be honest and you'll end up getting the most cash for your trash. Each platform also differs regarding cost. While you may earn 100% of what you get on Facebook Marketplace or Instagram, other online platforms charge anywhere from 20 cents a listing to a percentage of your listing's earnings. And a chilly one for most of us out there this morning. Blacksburg waking up to 43 degrees, so, so far so good. As we give you a live look at Virginia Tech, you've noticed that mostly clear sky overhead. Lots of sunshine for us today. Not quite as warm as yesterday, though, as we start to see that breeze having a little bit of an impact on temperatures for the New River Valley. We get into the lower 50s this afternoon. 636 students connecting across oceans. How they're coming together to make change around the globe. If storms move through your neighborhood and you safely take a photo or video, feel free to share it with us. Open the Weather Authority app, click pins on the bottom, then click drop a pin. You can upload your picture or video here. New this morning, Blacksburg High School students are teenagers with a plan. Yesterday, along with a school in Ireland, they presented to diplomats in both countries. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with what the students had to say about this experience and an incredible experience it is. Definitely. So this program, Bridge the Pond, is where high school students here in the U.S. and students in Europe, they spend weeks studying global issues and topics. Then they present these uh, reflections and solutions. Yesterday over Zoom, students from Blacksburg High School and, and the King's Hospital School in Dublin presented to members of the U.S. Embassy, European Parliament, Irish Embassy and a member of the General Assembly. We spoke to the students that said getting to this point was a challenge that they enjoyed. They learned so much about themselves and the world that could help in the future, even if they don't go into politics. Anywhere it's going to help you to have worked together with people from all over the world. And then also just the process of finding a problem and solving it. 
important for high schoolers, even though like we can't vote yet or we can't do it, like we're not adults yet. So we still have ideas and inputs that we can share. Students from both schools did a great job. After their presentations, they answered some tough questions from the leaders. We'll have more information on this program on our website, WSLS.com. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. 6.40 now, back over to Chris with an update on your forecast. And if you're sick of the gloom, I think you're going to like this one. Yeah, and you know, you're going to like it for the next several days. Thank goodness, going to see plenty of sunshine as we go through the next few days and the next week. Starting out fairly mild, actually, in Lynchburg. By 7 a.m., 8 a.m., we'll be in the low to mid-40s. As we head deeper into the afternoon, temperatures recover into the middle to upper 50s. And as Patrick was saying, we think you're going to like this forecast because look at all the rain that is not going to be in southwest and central Virginia. Just a blank spot on the map there. We'll put some perspective on this dry spell coming up in about five minutes. That cup of coffee in your hands could cost more soon. We'll tell you why there could be a rise in prices. Expected parents may be anxious about giving birth during the pandemic. The important questions you should be asking as you get ready for your child's arrival. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Planning to give birth can be very stressful for any expectant parent. Add to that a pandemic and it can feel overwhelming. 10 News anchor Brittany McGraw is working for you on steps you can take to ease the anxiety of giving birth during the pandemic. Sandy Sicular is an ER doctor who is also six months pregnant. She says it worries her wife Erin every time she leaves for work. She was very concerned, but we took all the necessary precautions. Because of COVID-19, the birth plan for their second child will be totally different. Now, as things ramp up again, it's always in the back of our mind um, that, you know, Erin might not be able to join me or I'll have to wear a mask while I deliver. We're hoping it, not come, it doesn't come to that point. If you're pregnant, Consumer Reports says it's especially important to take extra precautions against the virus. There is evidence that pregnant women who have the virus are more likely to need intensive care unit admissions, ventilation, and advanced life support techniques. CR says you may want to talk with your doctor about ways to limit potential exposure to COVID-19. You'll probably have to go to the doctor's office for ultrasounds, but it might be possible to do some of your other prenatal appointments virtually. CR says prepare yourself for delivery by asking key questions in advance, like where to go when you arrive at the hospital, how your experience might be different if you test positive for COVID-19 when you show up, and how many people can be with you during labor. If your hospital's policy means your doula can't be in the delivery room with you, they can still help you, whether virtually or by phone, on the day. And beforehand, they can also help you to clarify your own preferences and to know how to advocate for them in the moment. Brittany McGraw, 10 News, working for you. You may not be able to have family and friends come over to help once you're home, so CR says to talk with them about ways they can support you virtually or in other safe ways. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And we'll start out with your picture of the day. This is just awesome right here. The bald eagles are really showing off their beauty in Wythe County. This from Lavon, and she's sent me other pictures. The nest. Absolutely huge. This is just a great shot to get our Thursday morning started out. Another great shot to get our Thursday morning started out. Coming to us from the Virginia Tech Carillion Sky Cam. Clear sky overhead. Nice sunrise about to get underway. Only 50 degrees in Roanoke thanks to a little bit of a breeze. But you look area wide and temperatures are all over the place. Lynchburg 49, Danville at 32, Martinsville 33, Blacksburg at 43. Now eventually as we head into the afternoon, the temperatures are going to follow more of a typical trend, whereas we'll be cooler in the New River Valley and Highlands with highs in the low to mid 50s. Roanoke in the middle to upper 50s, Lynchburg in the same ballpark. South side, whereas you're starting out as the cold spot, you'll actually wind up being the warm spot at about 62 degrees. But all of us are going to feel the breeze out there. Eventually, the wind gusts between 20 and 30 miles per hour. So not strong, not tropical storm force, not going to go producing any damage, but something we're going to notice as we go throughout the day today. 
Now, the jet stream, got to focus on that here the next few days. That's your dividing line between cold air and warm air. Right now, it's over top of us, so our temperatures are pretty seasonable, pretty typical for this time of year. But as the jet stream dips farther south, your colder air comes farther south as well as we head into the weekend. Thankfully, though, there will be plenty of sunshine and will be dry. So if you got to get the car washed after weeks of rain and wintry weather, you still got some time to do it Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We'll give you the green light on that so long as you don't mind it being just a little bit chilly out there. But again, at least we'll be dry and we'll be dry for several days to come. The last time we had seven straight days of absolutely no rain. That was back in mid November. So as I've been saying the past couple of days, we're kind of due, kind of owed this stretch of dry weather and especially sunshine. Nice to see that out there for the new river valley. Despite sunshine, we're only in the 40s for highs Friday, Saturday and Sunday each morning starting out in the 20s to bundle up this weekend. By Monday, we're back into the 50s and we make even more improvements as we head into the middle part of next week with high temperatures reaching into the 60s, perhaps as soon as Tuesday. For the Roanoke Valley, 50s today, barely 50 tomorrow, upper 40s and lower 50s through the first weekend of March. But after that, we start to turn a corner towards some warmer weather with high temperatures in the middle to upper 50s on Monday. Then by Tuesday, a nice breeze out of the southwest is going to help push temperatures well into the 60s each afternoon. Time now 649 got a couple of incidents on time saver traffic. That's right. We're following two crashes this morning. The first one we want to tell you about is in Botetot County on 220 there. It's in the vicinity of Ridge Road. Do expect some delays due to a vehicle crash there. The north right lane and right shoulder are closed there in the area where you see the arrow. The next one's going to impact you if you are in Carroll County this morning. It's on I-77 northbound. One travel lane, the northbound lane is closed this morning, so just give yourself a little extra time. Take some caution as you're driving there through the area. Some bad news for you this morning. Your cup of coffee may soon cost more. Coffee roasters are reporting a rise in operating costs, mostly related to shipping. That means they may raise retail prices. Midsize and smaller roasters have taken the hardest hit, but the big names like Folger also dealing with these higher costs. Last week, shipping backlogs pushed wholesale coffee prices to the highest level in more than a year. The Virginia Film Festival will return this year. Officials say a final decision has not been made on how the festival will look, but safety guidelines will be in place. The festival that takes place in Charlottesville every year was canceled last year due to the pandemic. The festival also announced its annual call for entries is now open for any filmmaker around the world. Virginia residents and students at Virginia schools are eligible to have their entry fees waived. The festival will run October 27th through the 31st. Many restaurants have struggled over the past year. Even through the hardships, one Virginia restaurant continues to serve up its famous Frank's and Burgers. The owners of Perfectly Frank in Norfolk say they've had overwhelming support from the community. Just last week, one customer came in looking to give a little extra love. They gave us 2000 and said, give them each $100 and use the leftover to purchase meals for people in need. It doesn't need to be a homeless person. It doesn't need to be somebody that like is starving. It can be anybody that lost their job, that is struggling. This inspired a new program called Franks for Friends. Customers can buy a meal, stick it up on the board, and anyone can get a hot meal to go, no questions asked. The owner says since the program started a week ago, they've gotten about $1,000 in food donations for the board. Neighbors helping neighbors. We always come together. Our community is so fantastic for that. I love it. 651 this morning. Five things you need to know are coming up after the break. 655. Here's five things you need to know before heading out the door. The U.S. Capitol is under heightened security today due to the possible threat of violence. New intelligence points to possible violence from domestic extremists. Officials say QAnon conspiracy theorists believe today is the true inauguration day and that Donald Trump will retake the presidency. Officials say domestic extremist groups have discussed plans to take control of the Capitol and remove Democratic lawmakers. 
Today could be the day the Senate takes up the COVID-19 relief bill. Senate Democrats are down to the wire, scrambling to put the final touches on the COVID-19 relief bill. Direct payments will now be sent to fewer Americans, individuals making more than $80,000, and couples above $160,000 will not receive a check. House lawmakers passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act last night. The police reform bill bans chokeholds and eliminates qualified immunity for law enforcement. The legislation also bans no-knock warrants, mandates data collection on police encounters, prohibits racial and religious profiling, and redirects funding to community-based policing programs. The $400 million plan to develop a casino in Danville is taking shape. Caesars Entertainment says Marnell Companies will help redevelop the site. The firm has redesigned or has designed several Vegas casino and casinos and attractions. It's set to open in 2023, but the project could break ground later this year. And another nice sunrise for us from our Poor Mountain, Virginia Tech, New College Institute and Roanoke Blacksburg Airport Skycams. If you get a good picture, you know what to do with it. Send it our way via pin it or on social media. Another nice day for us today. Maybe not quite as warm as yesterday. Breezy at times. Temperatures mostly in the 50s outside of Southside. We'll be in the upper 40s and lower 50s through the weekend after starting out each morning in the 20s, but we warm up nicely next week. High temperatures back in the 60s. More sunshine and no rain chances for right now. Coming up next on today, how the pandemic is impacting couples looking to expand their families. We want to leave you with a live look at Lynchburg from our Liberty University Skycam. Oh, look at that beautiful sunrise. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. We hope it is wonderful.